All right, today we're going to learn how to work with greatest common factor using the upside down cupcake here. So what we're going to do, and I just start off with two very simple numbers. I have two different color tiles. I have my red and yellow, and I have my purple and green. To start off with, I'm going to just work with red and yellow. So I'm going to start off with four yellow, and six red. All right, so look in here, if I go ahead and I group them, we need to work with the smallest prime number other than one, so that way we can actually divide these up into different groups. So starting with the smallest prime number, I know that both of those are divisible by two because I can make groups of two. So now, Knowing that they're divisible by two, I'm going to go ahead and take my purple tiles and I'm going to put that out here, out to the side, because I know that two goes into both four and six. So when I look at this, I have two groups of two. So four divided by two is going to be two. I have two groups of three so therefore, I'm going to have 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Can I, when I look at this now, I'm trying to figure out if I can make this into groups of 2 or any other types of groups. When I look at it, I can't make these any smaller. So my greatest common factor for 4 and 6 are t is 2 because I had 2 tiles on the outside of the cake. This time... We're going to go up just a little bit, and we're going to have 6 and 9. So when I do this, I put them into my groups. Well, I notice that I have two groups by 3. Over here, I have three groups of 3. So there's one group of 3, two groups of 3, three groups of 3. So that must mean that these are both divisible by 3. So if I divide 6 by 3, what would that give me? If I take away uh, one group, if I just look at this, I have two groups of 3. So that must mean that I have 2 left. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Or, if you want to think about it the other way, 2 times 3 is 6. So if I do the same thing here, 3 times what is going to be 9? Well, let's look. We have three groups of three, so that must mean that three times three is nine. And again, I'm going to look. Can I make this any smaller? No, I can't. So the greatest common factor of six and nine are going to be is going to be three. All right. This time we need to make it a little bit more difficult. So we're going to see, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, there's 12, and this time we're going to have 16. Alright, so now looking at this, I need to try to divvy these up into groups that is divisible by either 2 or 3. That's the smallest prime number that I can divide these groups up into. So let's try two to begin with. See if it works. Well, I have two groups of six. Let's try this one. Oh, that works too. I have two groups of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're both divisible by two this time. So I simply I take my two out. So we said that we had two groups of six. So 12 divided by two is six. We had 16 divided by 2, 
we said that there was eight in each group of two, so that must mean that 16 divided by two is eight. All right, so now I have my eight. Let's see, I bet I could would probably make these a little smaller. Let's try to put them in groups of two again. There's a group. Oh, I got groups of two again. So once again, both of them are divisible by two because there's two groups of three and two groups of four. So six divided by two is three. Eight divided by two, because we have eight divided by two, is going to be four because there was two groups of four. This time, I have to take my two numbers on the outside here times each other to figure out my greatest common factor. In this case, I have two times two, which is four. The greatest common factor of 12 and 16 is four. Let's not.